And uh, Trudeau ran to the left of that province, promising massive infrastructure programs. You know, he led on, we don't have to be immediately worried about the deficit, etc. cetera. Uh, this time around, uh, he changed clothes somewhat in all kinds of ways. He likes changing clothes a lot, that guy. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, Canadian Invention is the oldest and longest running independent socialist magazine in Canada. And I think next to Monthly Review from New York, the oldest, longest running social independent socialist magazine in North America. Uh, in fact, it's probably one of the oldest, longest running socialist magazines in the English speaking world anywhere. Uh, and I say that as the editor of the Socialist Register, which was begun in 1964 as well. Um, and I go a very long way back with it because Saigonic, its founder, was my economics professor. Uh, when I was an undergraduate student, I think the first course I took with him was in third year, so that would have been 1964 when the magazine got going. Um, I remember, uh, even though I was active in student politics, feeling guilty that I wasn't as radical as the people around Canadian Dimension and Psy, uh, and feeling that there was, I didn't have the degree of commitment that would get me out in the snow on a Saturday morning to protest against the Vietnam War in 1965. Uh, but when I went to London uh, to be a graduate student in 1967, uh, Gonick uh, made me his agent. Uh, and I was tasked with tracking up and down the Charing Cross Road in London, trying to convince the bookstores to carry this obscure Canadian magazine, uh, which I continued to do uh, uh, until uh, I left in 72. Um, so yeah, I go back a long way, and I have to say, and I really, really do mean this, that although I published my first academic article uh, before I got hired at Carleton in 1972 in a fairly illustrious magazine called Political Studies, when I published my first Canadian Dimension article, and it was on Allende's overthrow in Chile, uh, I was co-written with uh, other people here in Ottawa. Uh, I was much prouder of uh, that article appearing in Canadian Dimension than I was of that first academic article. I, I remember the enormous thrill of getting that issue and opening it up and seeing myself in it. It mattered so much. Uh, you know, Dimension has played uh, a, a incredibly important role in this country, especially in the context of the Social Democratic Party, the, the New Democratic Party. You know, Saigonic, after all, was a member of the Legislative Assembly for the NDP in Manitoba in 1969. Um, and, and with the expulsion of the waffle, um, it just never had a coherent socialist force within it. Uh, and there was therefore no project of trying to keep a socialist consciousness alive, uh, to see one's vocation as trying to make, educate, and keep socialists. That should be the role of a party that represents working people. There were other magazines that did, but Dimension, I think, filled it more and better. Uh, and certainly much better than, you know, us Marxist academics can do in academe. You know, I resented, on the other hand, when I had that column in the 1980s called Panic on Politics. Uh, that I was only allowed to write 900 words. I thought that was excessively uh, journalistic on Dimension's part. But seriously, uh, Dimension uh, has played an incredible role. Side deserves a lot of uh, credit for that, but obviously not, not alone. Uh, and it thrills me, it absolutely thrills me to see that there are young people, not only in Winnipeg, but across the country, who are taking up this legacy. It's about, I think, the most important thing that can be done. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that there won't be any longer uh, an actual magazine one can thumb through. 
but as I said, I'm an old guy and, you know, I'm not as comfortable on social media as you young people are, so maybe that doesn't matter so much. Uh, but we've got to keep it going. Uh, one of its great achievements, and this is very rare on the left, has been that it is now the most coherent journalistic representation of the struggles of indigenous people and of the condi condition of indigenous people in the country. Uh, that's an enormously important achievement. I think we'll get, really know we're getting far with that when Canadian Dimension can have as critical a voice vis-a-vis -vis the dilemmas and complexities and contradictions in the indigenous movement as it does vis-a-vis -vis the trade union movement. That's what I admired about Canadian Dimension, that you, one knew it stood with working class struggles, but it was quite prepared constantly to be prodding and pushing and, and pointing to the limits in those struggles. It does not yet have the confidence to do that with the Indigenous movement. And that's partly, of course, because of the sensitivities of being a white settler colony, etc. But we're going to know that we're making progress when there's enough Indigenous writers inside Dimension and they're prepared to raise those issues openly uh, in their community through a socialist magazine like Dimension. But this can apply to with the women's movement, it can apply to the green movement. I'm just picking that one because Dimension has made such remarkable strides in that arena.